Hi guys, welcome to Everything Blockchain. While it's safe to say blockchain technology is a game changer underpinning the transition to Web3, certain limitations such as blockchain's inability to access off-chain data would render its real-world application useless. But that isn't the case, right? And why is that? Well, it's because of oracles. Oracles serve as blockchain middleware. And in today's video, I will be taking you through what are blockchain oracles, why we need them, and finally, what is the oracle problem? Blockchains and smart contracts are self-contained, closed systems that can't access outside data. However, several contractual agreements necessitate access to off-chain data for execution. And this is where oracles come into play. I'm sure that sounded like a lot, but let me give you an example. Let's say John insures his warehouse for X amount. And one day the warehouse burns down for whatever reason. But how will blockchain get the information about the warehouse burning down? In such a case, the smart contract relies on third party information as to the state of the warehouse. And that's what I meant when I said oracles serve as blockchain middleware. In the Web3 space, oracles are third party services that provide blockchains and smart contracts access to off chain data, bridging the information gap that exists. In the absence of oracles, smart contracts would have a minimal use and DeFi would not be where it is today. DeFi relies heavily on oracles to deliver on its value proposition of broader access to financial applications. In fact, even for the implementation of decentralized crop insurance contracts, we need weather data. Basically, we need a lot of off-chain data to fully unlock the potential of smart contracts. Also, at this point, it's important to note Oracles do not constitute the data source themselves. So oracles are not the source of real world information. Instead, they gather it from existing databases and communicate that data in a reliable way to the blockchain. Let's now briefly go over the various types of oracles. So we have inbound and outbound oracles. The difference is based on the flow of information. Inbound oracles deliver off chain or real world data for smart contract consumption. They're the most commonly used and supply information ranging from weather conditions to proof of payments to life price fees. Outbound oracles, on the other hand, send information from smart contracts to the external world. These systems are designed to send commands to off-chain systems to execute specific actions. They're most commonly used by decentralized banking networks. Then we have software and hardware oracles based on where the oracle draws data from. So software oracles interact with digital sources such as website, online databases, etc. to supply smart contracts with real-time information. For example, the data delivered by these oracles can include exchange rates, price fluctuations, or even real-time flight information. Hardware oracles transmit information from the real world to smart contracts. They're designed to translate physical events into digital values that can be processed and read by smart contracts. The information is accrued from electronic sensors, barcode scanners, thermometers, etc. They are of particular importance in supply chain management. Although uncommon, even individuals with specialized knowledge serve as oracles and they're referred to as human oracles. Now let's move on and discuss centralized and decentralized oracles. Centralized oracles, as the name alludes to, are controlled by a single entity and are the sole providers of data for a smart contract. Now, blockchains, as we know, are decentralized and distributed networks that protect against single points of failure. Reliance on centralized oracles introduces significant risk by introducing a single point of failure. All contract participants need to place their trust in the entity controlling the oracle. Relying on a single entity for accurate information can jeopardize the security of the smart contract. Before we discuss decentralized oracles, let's talk about the oracle problem. The oracle problem revolves around a very simple limitation. And that is something that we've already discussed. The fact that blockchains cannot pull in data from or push data out to any external system. This coupled with the use of centralized oracles that introduce a single point of failure is defined as the oracle problem. It goes against the entire ethos of decentralization. Now we talk about decentralized oracles, which help to mitigate the risks associated with the use of centralized oracles. Decentralized oracles solve the off-chain data problem by granting blockchains access to real-world information without introducing a single point of failure. 
So these oracles do not rely on a single source of information. Instead, they collect data from multiple external sources that independently gather data which fortifies the authenticity of the information. So that's decentralized oracles, guys. And that's it for today. I hope you were able to understand all three points, what oracles are, why we need them, and what the oracle problem is. I'll be back with more such videos. But before I go, I would be grateful if you could give this video a like and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. I'll see you another time. Till then, take care. Bye.